What's going on, people? Eddie Abaisi here on BNB Kigali, and today I'm joined by one of the best and most skillful players we've seen around the basketball league, Thomas Cleveland, a reg basketball player. Thank you very much for speaking to us, man. Uh, thank you for having me. First and foremost, uh, there's this Bible verse you post every time on your social media, Psalms chapter 91. Why is that? Um, Psalms 91 is kind of like, um, it's like a, a coat of protection. That's like my favorite verse. Uh, I read it every morning when I wake up. I just feel like once I read that verse, like I'm protected for the day. And when I put it on my social media, it's kind of like, you know, with social media is so much energy um, that people give out. And I just want to make sure I'm protected in all ways. Going back into 2022, when uh, you came in Rwanda for the first time, tell me about your decision making process. And did you anything about the league here? Uh, no, I didn't really know anything about the league. Um, the first time I came here was for the BAL. Uh, Coach Robert Pack, he's from Louisiana, where I'm from, and he played in the NBA. And he convinced me to, um, to come to Rwanda because before that I was in Greece um, playing. And he told me about the opportunity. He said I was going to love it. And, you know, I took the chance um, to come out here. What I guess you could say a risk because I didn't really know. But it turned out to be great. And I'm glad that he, he brought me here. Didn't you find it tougher to adapt to this Africa game, which is quite physical, I think? Yeah, it was a, it was a challenge for me at first. I didn't realize how um, how physical the game was. I remember in the first couple of practices, uh, Adonis, he would tell me, like, bro, this game is really physical. And, you know, I just thought he was saying that because, you know, the game is physical everywhere. But definitely in Rwanda, it's, it's a different type of physicality. Mm, you were familiar with Adonis before coming here? Uh, not before. I, I wrote him on Instagram. Um, I came across his page and I wrote him before I came uh, when the coach was trying to convince me to come. And when I talked to him, he spoke highly of it. So that kind of helped my decision also. And then from there, me and him formed a, a great uh, friendship. Fair, fair. Uh, you obviously played for various teams, whether in Africa and America. Could you tell me uh, how would you rate Rwanda Basketball League? Uh, Rwanda Basketball League, it's uh, compared to the other leagues um, in, Africa and, in Africa and outside. I think uh, Rwanda League is kind of like the top heavy. So you have like one through four. It's really, really strong teams in the bottom, not so much, but the four, the top four teams, I feel like they can compete uh, throughout Africa for sure in other leagues and definitely uh, Europe too. I saw an interview 10 years ago talking about leaving Lobos in Mexico yeah. and you mentioned that your dreams wouldn't come true if you stayed there. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder, what was your dream at the time? I mean, in the high stage of your career. So at that point, uh, when I was getting ready to leave the Lobos, my dream was to play professionally. Mm -hmm. And I felt like if I stayed there, then it wouldn't come true. Mm -hmm. And making that decision, I feel like it really helped me. But in the process, like literally a day after that, that interview, mm -hmm. I ended up getting an injury. Mm -hmm. And it was like a tough injury. So me transferring, I, have to, I had to sit out anyway. So I got to rehab and get stronger, become a better player, a smarter player. So it all worked out. Did you uh, think about joining NBA and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, it's every kid's dream. Um, and that was the main goal from the beginning to, uh, to, play, to play in the NBA for sure. But uh, I'm well, like, um, grateful for the path that I took, even though I didn't uh, play in the NBA. What else do you consider? Apart from money, which is an overriding factor, of course, what else do you consider when you're deciding which team to play for? Uh, it has to do with like how how the management is. Is it like a family? Um, is it like a family-based uh, organization and location also too? Because you know um, I'm away from home a lot. I want to have my family be able to come visit here and there, so that plays a part too. Mm -hmm. You're not coming Rwanda to play for Reg. Only it seems like that. It seems like your relationship with them is quite unbreakable, isn't it? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, me and Reg, we over the past, I guess you could say, two, three years, we built a, a really strong relationship, um, and, and they made it feel like home for me. So I love it here. Why don't you choose like other APA Patriots? Uh, I'm, I'm the type of guy. I'm always where my feet is. So. I'm with Reg, so when I'm with Reg, I'm, I'm fully committed. Um, I know my boy AD, uh, he, he decided to go with Patriots. Um, but, you know, for right now, I'm definitely Reg.
Uh, do you reckon native players here in the league aren't good enough given that many teams are now in investing more in bringing more players from abroad? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's going to ultimately help the game. Um, bringing more players from abroad is going to, um, I guess you could say, motivate uh, players to work harder. And also, when you play against talent, better talent, you become better too. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up sharper in Rwanda basketball. But the players here um, from Rwanda, they're already good players. It's, it's a lot of good players here. I feel like some of them are the top players in Africa. A quick one. What is the biggest hardship have you ever faced here? The biggest hardship in, in Rwanda? The in the league? Yeah. I don't know, that, that 2022 playoffs when we won it, that was very challenging but the, for the local league. When, when we, um, we beat Patriots in the championship, that was very, very challenging. Um, the BAL, is, don't get me wrong, is super strong, but I don't know, it's something about the Rwanda local league that where it's kind of um, when it get to the playoffs and the finals, it's, it's really challenging. It's almost like a little bit step higher than the, um, the, the BAL level just because there's so much pride behind it. What about financial matters? Because we've had some players complain that their teams owe them salaries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Have you had any similar experience? Uh, no, for the most part, I've been pretty good with Reg. Um, they've been on top of it. That's another reason why I love to play here with Reg. Uh, I know I'm going to get my money, you know. A lot of situations, not even just in Rwanda, but like all throughout overseas basketball, you can get in a situation where your team don't pay you all your money, but I never had no problems here. Uh, I'd say um, things didn't go as planned your two BAS seasons with Reg. What do you think is the primary cause of those back-to-back -back quarterfinals eliminations? Um, I would have to say I think it's just um, when it comes down to, to preparation. The two, the two seasons where I played in the BAL, we played early, like in March. And we we got here literally like in February, so we had like really two weeks, three weeks max to practice and prepare. But now they kind of switched the um, they switched the the conferences, so now it's like in late May. So I feel like with us having from February to late May to um, to prepare is going to be better. I I just think it's lack of preparation. That's it. What about technical matters? Yeah, but technical matters, it kind of play into the, to the preparation. I feel like um, for the BL, we have, if we have a great coach and great preparation, we're going to definitely perform and hopefully bring like a championship to Rwanda, whatever team it is. If you had a good coach. Yeah, like good coaches and great preparation time. In the past, the two seasons I played, I know with Coach Robert Pack and Coach Dean, they're really great coaches and they're really organized. I think we just needed more preparation time with those two coaches. I feel like if we had more preparation time with those two coaches, mm -hmm. and we would have we would have made a run. It's, it's in 2022, the first BAL I played, I feel like if Adonis would have been healthy cuz we lost him to a hamstring early, mm -hmm. a hamstring injury early in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. If Adonis healthy that game, we definitely make a run 100% cuz even with him out, we only lost by three. But with him there, I feel like we beat that team by 15, mm. 15 you points. You mentioned Adonis like for twice in this conversation. What is he like? Off the court, uh, he's chill. You know, that's that's like my brother. That's like my Rwandan brother for sure. Uh, he made life easy for me when I got here. Uh, anything I needed off the court, he showed me where it was or he got it for me. Uh, on the court, you know, he's a, a very energized player, dynamic player, athlete. Uh, point guard, score, passer, everything. If you could go back in time, what adjustments would you make uh, to save Reg from losing that quarterfinals? Uh, I think I would just, I think first and foremost, preparation. And then another thing, I would have probably tried to convince the management to keep Pichu. Because we, we switched out Pichu. Um, so I probably would have tried to go because I don't get into management matters, but I try, I would have tried to go, you know, like just keep Pichu because I feel like we had him the whole time and it was successful mm -hmm. and we would have kept him. That and, and preparation. And, of course, um, all of us staying healthy. Did you get disappointed when he left? Uh, yeah, it kind of bothered me because, you know, that's the big fella and he's dynamic in the paint. He blocks shots, he rebounds, and he can score. 
then what do you think is the reason behind the underachievement of Rwandan teams in the BAL? Yeah, I just think it's, like I said, I think it's just a, a lack of preparation. Um, and the season is like, it's, I don't want to say weird, but it's kind of difficult because, you know, you play in one conference, you play six games maybe, and then after that you have a, 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 a rest period and then you play again. I feel like if it was a consecutive season, then then teams would be better. But I feel like now Rwanda teams are starting to figure it out where whoever is coming to the ball, they're getting them to come early and play in the local league and practice, practice, have friendly games out of the country. So Although you didn't take part in it, I believe you watched the previous BAS season and it was a shuttling um, display from APR who was representing Rwanda. What do you make of their performance? Uh, I didn't really get to watch the games. I watched one game. I don't know which one it is, but they hit the buzzer beater to go into overtime and, and won that game. Uh, that's the game I watched. And, and that game, I could say they, they fought really hard, for sure. What would you put their failure down to? Uh, I would put their failure to, I guess you could say, injuries because they lost two players. I know they lost to Donis for sure. And I think they had another player due to injury, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Let's talk about the league now. Um, now, a uh, couple of teams, I mean, several teams have good players. If you look at APR, Patriots, Kepler, they all have good players. Uh, this time, if you could bet on who would win it, would you back Reg? Yeah, I would definitely bet Reg, of course. I, I like our chances. Um, we work really, really hard. And um, I feel like in every position, we're strong. I feel like this the this the best team, uh, complete team wrecked and had so far throughout the years. Just as far as every position, you're strong. We like even guys coming off the bench are strong too. Who do you think we challenge you the most? Uh, I would say Patriots and, and APR, but in my opinion, um, Patriots are very strong this year. We've seen many African countries naturalizing American players. Uh, if one of them approaches you. Would you be interested in that move? Oh, for sure. Tell them, yeah, definitely. Tell them, come on, I'm ready. Rwanda. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that would be an easy call for me. Okay, that, uh, that would be a no-brainer. Eh? No-brainer. All right, cool. Uh, which career do you want to pursue after hang up playing basketball? Uh, after I'm finished basketball, um, I'll probably go into I'll probably go into music a little bit, and I will go into um, real estate. And and helping helping young um, young black Amer black Americans well not even black Americans just helping young young um, black men develop you know um, be able to make great decisions because life is really about the decisions that you make and just helping them um, get structure and, and discipline and also just being a family man you know I have a son he's three so I'm away from him a lot so. Mostly when I'm finished, it's going to be dedicated just to, you know, helping him um, mature and, and become a man and just helping the youth really doing my part. So you can sing? Uh, sing, yeah, sing a little bit, rap. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, yeah, I make music. Um, I have a couple of songs on Apple Music and Spotify and YouTube and all of that. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. 